Hey, hi, thank you for being here, welcome. So today we're actually gonna do something together and I wanna try this format because it's actually something that I do a lot and most of my work is based on research, it's based on reading and a lot of the things that I find are actually extremely beautiful. We're gonna let those birds sing every time they do and I'll shut up, we'll listen and then we'll go back. So <laughs> um, I wanna share with you things that I enjoy. So this is gonna be quite a short video, but hey, let's do it. So this is based on, on a book. I mean, it's a book in Turkey. I did not find the equivalent in English, but they made a book out of those collections of writings. They're from Erman Nessa, who wrote books that I really changed my life. Um, I really encourage you to Try reading Steppenwolf by Erman it's, it's it's wonderful. And then of course there's Siddhartha and then there's other books that I really enjoy. Today I'm going to read just a, a few quotes from him talking about trees. And that's why we're in the midst of trees. We're in Yildiz Park in Istanbul. And I spent, you know, more than an hour just connecting with the roots, connecting with the trees. and. I got a beautiful t-shirt about trees too <laughs> and yeah let's let's go let's have a moment so this is from Erman Nessa for me trees have always been the most penetrating preachers I revere them when they live in tribes and families in forests and groves and even more I revere them when they stand alone they are like lonely persons not like hermits who have stolen away out of some weakness, but like great solitary men, like Beethoven and Nietzsche. In their highest both, the world rustles. Their roots rest in infinity, but they do not lose themselves there. They struggle with all the force of their lives for one thing only, to fulfill themselves according to their own laws, to build up their own form, to represent themselves. Nothing is holier, nothing is more exemplary than a beautiful, strong, tree. When a tree is cut down and reveals its naked death wound to the sun, one can read its whole history in the luminous inscribed disk of its trunk, in the rings of its years, its scars, all the struggle, all the suffering, all the sickness, all the happiness and prosperity stand truly written, the narrow years and the luxurious years, luxurious years the attacks withstood, the storms endured. And every young farm boy knows that the hardest and noblest wood has the narrowest wings, rings, that high on the mountains and in continuing danger, the most indestructible, the strongest, the ideal trees grow. Trees are sanctuaries. Whoever knows how to speak to them, whoever knows how to listen, to them can learn the truth. They do not preach learning and precepts. They preach, undeterred by particulars, the ancient law of life. A tree says, a kernel is hidden in me, a spark, a thought. I am life from eternal life. The attempt and the risk that the eternal mother took with me is unique. Unique the form and veins of my skin. Unique the smallest play of leaves in my branches and the smallest scar on my bark. I was made to form and reveal the eternal in my smallest special detail. A tree says, my strength is trust. I know nothing about my fathers. I know nothing about the thousand children that every year spring out of me. I live out the secret of my seed to the very end and I care for nothing else. I trust that God is in me. I trust 
that my labor is holy. Out of this trust, I live. When we are stricken and cannot bear our lives any longer, then the tree has something to say to us. Be still, be still, look at me. Life is not easy, life is not difficult. Those are childish thoughts. Home is neither here nor there. Home is within you, or home is nowhere at all. A longing to wander tears my heart when I hear trees rustling in the wind at evening. If one listens to them silently for a long time, this longing reveals, reveals its kernel, its meaning. It is not so much a matter of escaping from one's suffering, though it may be seem to so, though it may seem to be so. It is a longing for home, for a memory of the mother, for new metaphors, for life. It leads home. Every path leads homeward. Every step, every step is birth. Every step is death. Every grave is mother. So the tree rustles in the evening when we stand uneasy before our own childish thought. Trees have long thoughts, long breathing and restful, just as they have longer lives than ours. They are wiser than we are, as long as we do not listen to them. But when we have learned how to listen to trees, then the brevity and the quickness and the childlike hastiness of our thoughts achieve an incomparable joy. Whoever has learned how to listen to trees, whoever has learned to listen to trees, no longer wants to be a tree. He wants to be nothing except what he is. That is home, that is happiness. <laughs> wow. There was something else that I want to share that I saw from him, but that I did not read here. It's the reparenting through the idea that they do not have parents. They are all born from a seed. That seed does not give them much information. It gives them the energy to actually grow a little bit until they can feed from the sun and from the roots that they have planted. But they live without their parents, without parenting. And for those who had difficult, difficult years in their childhood and who did not receive the support, trees and especially groves and forests, they're incredible friends. So that, so much so that being next to them, being a companion and not looking for them to to protect you, to stand strong for you, but just be be with them. I think it's the most powerful lesson here. They connect with one another, different species. They connect at the roots. They are looking for water. They give each other messages about the bacteria and different illnesses that are, you know, that are around. And I think it's, extremely beautiful what they have been able to create the sense of community of family without the actual family and we can find that throughout nature obviously and there's obviously more going on it's not all peace and love <laughs> there is you know a lot of ferocity within nature too But I wanted to share that because they, they help me heal my wounds. They help me grow bigger. They help me anchor myself more, grow stronger roots, but also reach towards the sun. And I hope that it helps you in your own journey, in your own path. And see you soon. Bye.